Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I thought I would give some great recommendations for those who are looking to get into thrillers. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you will know that suspense thrillers are basically my favorite genre. They're my go-to books, especially if I need a palette cleanser or something familiar. If I just want to get lost in something that's going to be fast-paced, easy to read, absorbing, engaging, and things of that nature. I have been reading thrillers for as long as I can remember, and so I have read a lot of them. So I kind of wanted to make this video for those who have possibly been thinking about getting into thrillers but they don't know where to start, or perhaps for those who are trepidatious about getting into thrillers because of some of the subject matter that is contained within thrillers and maybe want to kind of get their toes wet with something a little bit softer for lack of a better term. So today I have a wide variety of recommendations. I think there's going to be a little bit of something for absolutely everybody in here and I've kind of based these recommendations on three criteria. So every single one of these recommendations is going to have at least one of these things. It's either going to be on the lighter side which means it's not going to be crazy intense, dark, or gruesome. Like it's not going to be overtly scary or graphic or anything of that nature. Another one is that it's going to be pretty fast-paced and bingeable meaning it's going Going to want to keep you turning the pages. We're not going to want to stop until you get to the very end to find out the resolution to the story. A lot of these are also going to have some pretty substantial plot twists. Now I've been reading thrillers for so long it takes a lot for a book to shock me and that's not why I read thrillers. I read thrillers for the journeys and so all of these books definitely take you on a journey and whether or not you're going to like that journey is completely up to you but I definitely read for the journey for the experience of getting to the end and if it does have a shock that is just really a bonus for me and I give it extra points for that because if it can shock me if it's truly going in a direction I didn't see coming that is a huge plus. So a lot of these books have plot twists that one either I didn't see coming or I really did find pretty interesting creative and clever. So all of these books that I'm going to be talking to you about today have at least one of those criteria. I have a huge stack of books here that I want to talk to you about. I'm going to try to make my synopsis and review of these books pretty brief or else we're going to be here for a very long time. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the books contain so you can make your own decision about whether or not you feel like they would be a good fit for you. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So I actually just want to start with a couple of YA recommendations. This is for all of those people who still actively read and love YA and might want to get into the thriller genre whether it is YA or not. This is a great introduction to that genre and this is just a great introduction to the genre even if you don't read YA. Even if you don't typically read YA I would still recommend these stories because YA in general whether they're thrillers or not they are going to be lighter than what you might normally figure in the adult age range. So of course the very first one that's going to come to mind with regard to a YA a book in this genre is the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson. There are three books in this series and this is probably one of the most well-written solid YA thrillers that I have ever read in my entire life. This follows our main character Pippa Fitzemoji and she is a senior in high school at the start of this first book and she decides to do kind of her senior project if you will on a crime that happened in their town five years ago. A high school student named Andy Bell was brutally murdered and everybody thought that her boyfriend did it because he ended up committing suicide but Pippa always thought that there was more to that story and so she is using her senior project as a way to kind of investigate this right and so she goes on a journey to discover the truth about what happened to Andy Bell. If you have an opportunity to listen to this on audio I would highly recommend because there are interviews and things like that so it's not just a standardly narrated story and it was fantastic it was very well done and overall just the story itself the way that it was crafted was absolutely fantastic. I would recommend this to basically everyone because in all honesty this is better than some of the adult thrillers that I've read so I am always going to recommend this I'm always going to sing its praises and again this is a great great entry into the genre. I also want to talk about Karen M. McManus. She primarily only writes YA thrillers and for the most part she does a decent job. Perhaps one of her most well-known stories is One of Us is Lying. This follows a group of teenagers who are all in detention together and while they are all together one of them ends up dead. And so naturally all of the other teens that were in detention become a suspect because they were the only ones in the room with this victim. And so you're following the teens as they're trying to figure out what happened to the person that was in detention with them because they know that none of them did it or at least they think they know that none of them did it. This has actually been adapted by I think it was Peacock and the adaptation was actually really really well done but different. So if you have watched that adaptation but haven't read the book you can still read the book and get a lot out of it because the ending is different. But overall I thought this was a very well crafted and engaging YA thriller. I say Karen and McManus in general is just a good author to go to in the YA age range for this genre if that is what you are looking for. And then the final YA one but perhaps the darkest one out of all of them Sadie by Courtney Summers. So this follows our main character Sadie who is basically on the hunt 
intent to get revenge on the person that brutally murdered her younger sister. So in this book, she is trying to find the person that murdered her sister. She is going after him specifically to take revenge. And there's also another perspective in here. It is a podcaster who was notified of Sadie's disappearance. And so he is trying to find her. So he is doing a podcast live basically as he is trying to find Sadie, trying to figure out what happened to her and what is going on because she is missing. Nobody knows where she is and she is on a path for revenge. Again, this is another darker story. Another one I would recommend listening to because there is a podcast element in here and there is like a full cast doing the podcast element and the interviews and things like that. Again, darker subject matter because if I remember correctly, the younger sister was murdered and I think she was also raped. So there could be sexual assault in here. I don't remember off the top of my head. So be sure to look into that in case that is a trigger for you. But this again, I feel has somewhat darker themes a little bit than the other ones that I talked to you about. So be warned before going in, but this is another solid YA suspense thriller, a very good introduction to the genre. All right. So now moving into adult suspense thrillers. And I wanted to start by recommending some authors in general, not one particular book of theirs, but their whole entire range, I think would be good for beginners into the genre. So the first one that I want to start with is Ruth Ware. And I know that's going to be somewhat of a controversial opinion because it seems like you either love or hate Ware. And here is why. Ruth Ware is very much, I would say, a modern day Agatha Christie in terms of the stories that she writes. She writes based on a lot of very familiar tropes, like, and then there were none. And her writing style is almost somewhat reminiscent of Agatha Christie as well. I would say she writes very slow burn, character driven. They are probably more mystery than they are suspense thrillers because you are not meant to be kept on the edge of your seat throughout the entirety of these stories. Usually when you are reading her stories, you are very much in the main character's head. You are seeing all of their thought processes, what they are thinking, what they are feeling, why are they making the decisions that they are making. So it's a lot more character based, I would say, than a lot of the other ones that you would normally find in the genre. So I definitely wouldn't say that Ruth Ware meets the fast paced, bingeable qualification, but I feel like overall her stories are very engaging. They are mostly uncomplicated. They are definitely not gruesome. And I feel like if you are wanting to introduce yourself to this type of genre, this is a great place to start, especially because like I said, she writes a lot based on very familiar tropes. And by reading books like these, you are going to be able to discover what you do or do not like in thrillers, what you do or do not want to read about. At this point, I have read every single Ruth Ware release. And I would say that my favorites are one by one. This is basically a wintry isolation type story about a group of colleagues who are being sent on this kind of like team building exercise, this corporate retreat. I think it's like in the French Alps. And of course there's like an avalanche and they are stranded. There's no phones, there are no electricity. Things are happening and people are dying. Very much in an and then there were none take. And I really enjoyed the way that Ruth Ware did it. I enjoyed kind of the twist that she took on it as well. I felt like it was very atmospheric and well done overall. I also recently read and enjoyed The It Girl, which is Ruth Ware's take on dark academia. This follows our main character, Hannah Jones, who is at Oxford. She makes really great friends with her roommate, April. And then one day, April is brutally murdered and killed. Hannah ends up pointing the finger at a porter named John Neville. John Neville was always acting very creepily around Hannah. There were bad vibes coming off of him. And then the night that April was murdered, she saw John Neville come from the direction of their dormitory. So she pointed the finger at him. And I believe this is set like 10 years in the future. And Hannah has just gotten the call that John Neville has passed away in prison. And she's kind of haunted by certain things. She's wondering if maybe she pointed the finger at the wrong man. And it's kind of her investigation into what happened to her roommate. Again, I thought this was a solid attempt at dark academia. Very character driven, very slow burn. There is a lot of repetition in here as you are following certain events over and over because you are very much in the mind of the main character and you are processing everything with her. So that is why a lot of people don't enjoy Ruth Ware books. It is not so much plot driven. It's not so much about getting from one thing to the next thing to the next thing as quickly as you can, which is very typical of suspense thrillers. So be in mind going into that. But again, a lot of our stories are very uncomplicated. They are not gruesome at all. I feel like her books are a great introduction into the genre. And of course, I could not do a thriller recommendation video for beginners without mentioning Riley Sager. Riley Sager is perhaps the most popular and most well-known suspense thriller author in modern times. I know that not everybody likes him and for a lot of people, he is hit or miss. He is actually hit or miss for me. I don't love everything that he writes, but will I read everything he writes? Absolutely, because his books take you on a journey. And like I said, that's why I read these. I read these for the journey. I wanna find out how you're gonna get from point A to point Z. So it's not necessarily about the twist at point Z. It's about what leads you all to there. Can I see it coming? Is it clever? Is it unique? Is it inventive? What all is going on on this journey? And that's one of the reasons why I really like Riley Sager because for the most part, even if I don't necessarily get along with his books, I always find that I'm pretty engaged and entertained and I'm wanting to know what happens. My personal favorites by Riley Sager are The Last Time I Lied. This is following a main character named Emma Davis. She went to this, I think it was like some kind of summer camp. She had three roommates and one day they all kind of went missing and nobody ever knew what happened to them. She was very much haunted by this event. It still plagues her to this day. And now she's being asked by the camp owner who is planning on reopening the camp to come back and kind of be an art teacher there because she is currently pretty well known in the art scene in New York. And Emma wants to go back because she wants to 
determine once and for all what happened to her three roommates. And one of the reasons why I really want to recommend this is because I loved the twist. This is one of those that had a really fantastic twist, at least in my opinion. It is not something that I ever saw coming. And by the end of this book, I was just like, well done, Mr. Sager. That's how this book left me feeling. And like I said, it's very rare that a book can actually do that for me. And so I was so impressed by that. This is one that I always recommend when I recommend Riley Sager. So if you've never read a Riley Sager, if you want to get into Riley Sager, this is one I definitely recommend just for the twist alone. Is the overall plot and storyline my favorite of his? No, I'm going to talk about that in a second. But I feel like the ending of this made everything else worth it. So this was a great journey and an even greater destination, in my opinion. The Riley Sager that perhaps has my favorite overall plot, and I feel like it's going to be the most accessible to people, is Home Before Dark. So the reason why I say that this is most accessible is it's going to have a trope that I think we're all familiar with, and that is the house is alive type of trope. So this follows our main character, Maggie. And when she was just five years old, she and her parents moved into this Victorian estate in Vermont called Bainberry Hall. And they were only there for about 20 days before they basically left fleeing for their lives because some really weird and creepy stuff is happening in this house. And Maggie's dad ends up writing a book about their experiences. It becomes a bestseller. And Maggie has essentially resented it her whole entire life because she doesn't believe any of it. She doesn't believe anything in there is true. But now her dad has recently passed away and she comes to find out that her dad never sold Bainberry Hall. It is still within their family. And since she is kind of like a house flipper by trade, she decides that she is going to go back to Bainberry Hall. She's going to get it ready to sell. She's going to get rid of it once and for all. And she's also going to put the kibosh on all of the things that her dad wrote in the story. But when she gets there, some pretty interesting things are happening to her as well. And in this book, you are not only getting Maggie's perspective, but you are also getting snippets of the book that her dad wrote. And the things that are happening to Maggie in the present are the things that her dad wrote about in the book, which was another interesting take about this. And I think overall it was solidly done. Vibes were excellent. And this is a great place to start with him. And then the last author as a whole that I just want to talk to you about really quickly is Lisa Jewell. So I discovered Lisa Jewell in early 2022. She had already been a pretty prolific author by that point. I had never read anything by her, but I did read a book of the month release by her and really enjoyed it. And then since then I've read, I want to say like three or four other of her books. Lisa Jewell does one of my favorite things in thrillers and that she takes multiple timelines and she weaves them together so beautifully. I love watching how all of the multiple timelines and character perspectives intersect. They are not gruesome, gritty, dark. They're not overtly violent, graphic, or anything like that. And that's one of the reasons why I feel like these are great introductory books because you're going to get a solid story from start to finish. You're going to want to keep turning the page. One of her books that I flew through in literally less than 24 hours is I Found You. I remember picking this up on a whim because I needed something to read and I ended up not being able to stop. This follows our main character Alice. She is a single mom. She has a house that's kind of right along the beach and she's walking along the beach one day and she finds a man just sitting there. He's just sitting there. He's not moving. He is not doing anything and even when inclement weather comes in he doesn't make any effort to move and kind of out of pity for him out of the goodness of her heart she takes him a jacket and kind of invites him inside. She doesn't really know what she's gotten herself into by inviting this man inside because it turns out he actually has no memory of his life before. He doesn't really know who he is, where he came from. And so Alice then gets wrapped up in that mystery trying to figure out where this guy came from. You are also following the perspective of a young wife. She's Eastern European. She's a new transplant to London to live with her husband, but her husband of, it's only just been a couple of weeks, her husband has gone missing and the police aren't really taking her seriously. They kind of think that he's probably having a fling already and that he's kind of run off, but she's adamant that he would never do that. And she's determined to find out what happened to her missing husband. So you were following her journey as she is trying to find out what happened to the husband. And then eventually the police start to take her seriously when some other things are uncovered because apparently her husband is not who she thinks he is. And so that gets the police very interested and involved in the case. So there's a whole lot of complexity to her storyline as well. So those are all happening in the present day. Then you're also getting a past perspective that is seemingly unconnected to what is happening in the present day. But of course it's not, it is all connected. And Lisa Jewell weaves them together so very nicely. Like I said, I found this to be extremely fast paced and bingeable. I didn't want to put it down. I feel like a lot of her stories are just very captivating and well put together. And I would highly recommend starting with Lisa Jewell if you are looking for a gateway into the suspense thriller mystery genres. All right, so now let's go ahead and get to some more specific book recommendations rather than authors. Although for the most part, a lot of these authors I would just recommend in general, but these are specifics that I think that you should read for specific reasons. So let's go ahead and start with books that I think romance lovers might be able to get into. I actually think, believe it or not, that avid romance readers have an easy gateway into this genre. And that is because if you are a romance reader, you are invested in relationships. Thrillers, especially domestic thrillers, heavily involve relationships, but on a darker side. But you can take that investment that you have in the romance of your books and you can place it in the investment within the darker side of the thriller aspect. So I have some domestic thrillers that I kind of want to recommend to you. I know that domestic thrillers are not everybody's thing. A lot of people find domestic thrillers on the more boring side of the thriller suspense genre, but I personally love them because as we all know, 
I'm a very character driven reader. But more importantly, I am fascinated by the dynamics between a husband and wife because I think it's one of the most complicated and complex relationships that a person can have in their life. You never really know what's going on behind closed doors. So you as an outsider would never really know what's going on with a married couple. But what a lot of these books explore are the fact that the couples don't even know exactly what's going on in their relationship. And so I think because you get a lot of those dynamics in like romance books as well, there are a lot of complexities within the characters of those books that goes into the relationships that they are trying to build. The same thing happens in kind of these domestic thrillers. So I have a handful of those that I want to talk to you about today. So of course, I really can't talk about a domestic thriller without talking about probably the OG Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I'm not really going to say too much about this because this is 100% an overhyped book. Literally everybody has heard of this book. It's about a woman whose husband goes missing and he becomes the prime suspect in her murder. but there's a lot more to it. And if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say anything more than that because anything more than that would be a spoiler. But I think that if you are into domestic thrillers with really complicated characters and relationships, you can't go wrong with this one because this is the epitome of that. This next one actually does have its own smidge of romance. This is kind of like a romantic suspense, I would say in some ways, but also the romance is kind of tainted. So what I'm talking about is Verity by Colleen Hoover. If you're not familiar, Colleen Hoover typically writes contemporaries and contemporary romances. That's that's what she's particularly known for. But Verity was one of her first forays into like the suspense thriller genre. This follows our main character, Lowen. She is a struggling author. And then one day she is presented with the opportunity of a lifetime. She is contacted by the husband of Verity, the titular character, because Verity can no longer write. Verity is a well-known popular author. She is writing the series, but after a terrible accident, she's incapable of moving or even speaking. So she is incapacitated and she cannot finish the series. And Lowen was chosen to finish the series because I guess it was either Verity or Verity's husband himself, who was a fan of Lowen's previous work. And he thinks that she is capable of finishing Verity's very well-known popular series. And so in order to kind of help her be able to do this, she ends up moving into the Crawford home and she needs to be near like Verity's work. She needs to go through Verity's office to kind of figure out where she had planned on taking the series. But while she's doing all of this investigating, she comes across a manuscript that Verity wrote that really does not paint Verity in a great light. And so Lowen is reading this manuscript and she has all of these secrets and she actually then starts to kind of develop a relationship with Verity. Verity's husband. There is that dynamic. That's why I kind of say it's a little bit tainted. And there's also what she's uncovering about Verity. And there's just a whole lot of different other things going in here. So this was a very, very bingeable story for me. Very, very bingeable. So this is one that I would definitely recommend. I think Colleen Hoover is a fantastic writer. She is easy to read from. And this is definitely going to keep you wanting to turn the page. You're going to want to know what happened. This is a great one in general, especially if you've already read Colleen Hoover's other novels, you're easily going to be able to transition into this one. This next one is one that I'm sure that we have all heard of before, Big Little Lies by by Leanne Moriarty. This is a fantastic story that is told from the perspective of three women, all mothers. They are all connected by the fact that their young children go to the same kindergarten. There is some drama with their kids. They all end up connecting together. This book starts with a murder that has happened. You don't know what has happened. You don't know to whom it has happened, but through the perspectives of these three women, as well as snippets of interviews that the police are having with other people who are not directly related to these characters, you are figuring out what actually happened. This was just a fantastic combination of drama and suspense. This is one of the first books that I remember reading that was equally parts family drama and suspense at the same time. This is hyped for a reason because it is so well done, well woven. So this is another one that you really can't go wrong with in the domestic suspense kind of field. Another domestic suspense that I loved was actually Pretty Little Wife by Darby Kane. I really enjoyed this one because right off the bat, you know that her husband is dead and you also know that she's the one that did it. I was really captivated by this book because of the tagline to it, as well as the last line of the synopsis. Let me, let me read it to you. So it opens with, shouldn't a dead husband stay dead? So this follows our main character, Lila, and basically her husband is a well-known, respected high school teacher and her husband goes missing. And of course, everybody is just devastated and they're in an uproar. They wanna know what happened to this high school teacher. Lila herself is obviously very, very concerned, but not for the reason everybody thinks because, and this is what got me. Lila is more confused because she was the last person to see her husband's body and now it's gone. Right off the bat, you know, her husband is dead. She's the one that did it, but she doesn't know where her dead husband is. She left him in one place and he is not there. So obviously that means there is more to it. Somebody knows what she did did and we're gonna have to go on the journey to figure out who and why and all of that good stuff. And I just really loved the main character in here. She was very steadfast. She was not wavering. She was not afraid. Even when police came to her door suspecting her of her husband's murder and disappearance, she was just unflappable and I really loved that about her. And she was not afraid to do what needed to be done. I really love this story from start to finish. I definitely recommend this one for sure. The Wife Upstairs is also a great book for a couple of reasons. Rachel Hawkins writes what I would classify as fluffy thrillers. So like contemporaries can be very light 
light and fluffy. I would say Rachel Hawkins writes the equivalent of fluffy thrillers. So when you go into these stories, you know that they're not going to be dark. They're not going to be anything serious. They're just going to be a good time. You're just going to sit down, buckle up, and be in for the ride. I'm mentioning The Wife Upstairs because this is more of a domestic suspense and that it is supposed to be a Jane Eyre retelling. This follows our main character, Jane, and she is basically a broke dog walker and she is walking dogs for a lot of people in this very wealthy, like gated community type of place. She ends up striking up a relationship with one of the husbands there who is a widower and they start building a relationship. She ends up moving into his house and she discovers a few things, namely the wife upstairs. Not going to say anything more about it. If you've read Jane Eyre, you're probably going to know a little bit of the trajectory that this takes. But of course, the wife upstairs has her own story. She has her own tale to tell and she has her own motivations. And you're going to find out all about those if you read this story. This one was a great time. I actually really enjoyed my reading experience with this one. And again, it's another great domestic suspense. Of course, another solid, very well-known domestic suspense that has been overhyped, that has made the rounds, but I think is well worth it. The Wife Between Us by Sarah Buchanan and Greer Hendricks. Let me just read you this quick little blurb. When you read this book, you will make many assumptions. That is true. You will assume you are reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she is obsessed with her replacement, a beautiful younger woman who is about to marry the man you both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle. Assume nothing. That's all I'm going to say about this. Like it says, when reading this book, you will make many assumptions and you will, and you will be wrong. It just really, really shocked me. I really enjoyed it. So this is another solid, solid domestic suspense. And the last domestic suspense that I want to talk to you about today is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. So this follows a married couple named Adam and Amelia, and their marriage is kind of on the rocks. Adam Wright is a very successful screenwriter, and he is basically work obsessed, and he also suffers what's called face blindness. So he actually has trouble recognizing his own wife. So Amelia, his wife, is very tired of being unseen in multiple different ways. So not only can he physically not recognize her, but also because he's just so consumed with his job. She ends up winning this trip away to Scotland, and she thinks it's just what their marriage needs, and so she is excited she's going to take him to this remote location in Scotland, but it's like winter. It is dead winter, and so naturally it is very snowy, it's blustery. It is not the perfect time for this getaway. Adam wants absolutely nothing to do with this, but he's going along with it. It's his wife, and when they get to the location, they notice that they're staying in this kind of like converted church that's been converted into like this Airbnb type style, but it's very ominous, very creepy. Some weird things are going down. Amelia is determined to make this work because it is the last ditch effort for her and her husband, and her husband believes the same. Like, this is going to make or break their marriage. But they didn't actually randomly win this trip. One of them has specific ideas about what's going to happen on this trip, and that's really all I'm going to say. There is another perspective in this story that ends up being really important, and I don't want to say anything more about that because that's all in the fun of reading this story in terms of how this perspective connects to Adam and Amelia. This is another one where you're going to make a lot of assumptions and you're probably going to be wrong. I'm just going to leave it at that. I would say that the overall plot of it, like, didn't necessarily always keep me engaged and invested. But once you get to the plot twists, that was what really got me. I thought that was remarkably clever and well done. So I hand it to Alice Feeney on that one, and that's why I definitely want to recommend this one. Next, I have two that I want to recommend to those who are more fans of literary type fiction. And I would say that these are more on the literary side for thriller suspense. I'm going to talk about them at once because they are similar kind of in terms of theme. They are both dark academia. The first, In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. And If We Were Villains by by M.L. Rio. Like I said, these are both dark academia and they both have similar plot lines in terms of the fact that they both include a very close friend group where one of the friends died and now you're kind of learning what happens. They are very different though in terms of overall characters and who did it and why and what happened, but they have, like I said, very similar themes. I would say that If We Were Villains is definitely more on the literary fiction side because the group of friends that we were following went to this very prestigious private like dramatic art school. They are kind of Shakespearean experts and there is a lot of Shakespeare Shakespearean talk and quotations in here. And there's the level of pretension that goes along with this. This, I believe, has been compared to The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I cannot myself prove or disprove that because I have never read The Secret History by Donna Tartt, but it sounds like it has the same overall pretension to it. I just really, really love this. This is one of the first Dark Academia books that I've ever read, and it really cemented my love of that genre. And so I think if you are more on the literary side as a reader, that you could really, really enjoy this, as well as In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which is not quite as literary in my opinion. It's definitely got more of a contemporary vibe overall, but it is still very well done, has excellent complicated characters, and you're getting that past perspective, you're getting that present perspective, you're finding out what actually happened in the past, and they were just phenomenal. Highly recommend both. All right, guys, we are getting there. So these last five that I want to talk to you about today, they are all extremely fast-paced, bingeable reads. Like, you are going to go into these, and you are not going to want to stop reading, and that's why I feel these are great introductions into the thriller genre, because they are going to keep you engaged from start to finish. The first one I've talked about multiple times, it's going to be no surprise to absolutely anyone, but I will always sing this book's praises, No Exit by Taylor Adams.
them. Not only is this a bingeable fast-paced thriller, but it is extremely atmospheric. It is a wintry isolation thriller that follows our main character who is basically stuck at an isolated rest stop in Colorado through a huge snowstorm blizzard. She is trapped there with strangers that she doesn't know and when she's outside trying to get cell reception she walks past this parked van that's in the parking lot and she notices a cage and inside the cage is a young girl and she realizes that one of the people she's stuck at the rest stop with is a kidnapper and possibly worse. And so this is now a survival story not only for herself but for this child because she now has to try to rescue this child. It was extremely tense, suspenseful, thrilling and you can just feel the desolation, the desperation, the cold in this book. I was so engaged in the story. I was just in it, in the environment, in the atmosphere. I remember driving to work and like not realizing how I got there. It was like beyond autopilot because I felt like I was there with our main character Darby as she was trying to fight for her life and I just had to know what happened. This for sure is one that I recommend just picking up if you feel like you could handle the tense suspense of this kind of story. It definitely has some scary vibes in there as well because you can put yourself into Darby's shoes. You can imagine yourself in this situation and that's what makes it fantastic. So this I think is a great one to get you invested in this genre. A very recent read that I finished, I think it was back in February, is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. So this is a story about a mother who is waiting up late for her son. Her son was supposed to be back a couple of hours ago for curfew and he has not arrived. And when she sees him walking up the street, she is noticeably relieved. But then she sees somebody else on the street and then she witnesses her son brutally stabbing this person. She doesn't know who this person is. She has no idea what is happening. All she knows is that her kind, loving, gentle son has just become a murderer. And naturally that is a horror, that is a nightmare that you can't even imagine. You can't even process that. And so after this very long night of her son getting arrested and going to the police station and all of that stuff, she goes home, she falls asleep. And when she wakes up the next day, it has never happened. It is the day before. And so you are actually following her as she's going backwards through time. It is not a time loop because she's continuously going backwards. At first, it's just day by day. Then it starts skipping several days, then weeks, then months, and then even years. And she's skipping so far backwards in time because basically she's being pointed to these pivotal moments that she missed the first time around. And all of these moments, all of these puzzle pieces end up getting put together to paint the clear picture of why her son has murdered this person. And this was just so incredibly fast paced. Like I did not want to put this book down. I wanted to know what happened. And overall, I just felt like it was really well done. This was my very first Jillian McAllister. It will not be my last just because of the journey that this took me on. Of course, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because it is got that little tiny aspect of sci-fi. You're meant to believe that this moment of the main character watching her son kill somebody is so catastrophic and traumatic that it's enough to kind of thrust her back in time to create this phenomenon that sends her back in time. Now, this is definitely not complex sci-fi. This is not Blake Crouch level sci-fi. If you're expecting a lot of details as to how this could actually happen and why you're not going to get that here, you just have to go along with it. She's going backwards through time and she's trying to stop this murder before it happens. Definitely fast paced. It will keep you engaged and it's not too harrowing or gruesome or anything like that. So strongly recommend. Kind of on a similar level, a book with somewhat of a sci-fi twist, The Passengers by John Mars. This is another fairly recent read. I had never read a John Mars before and I'm so glad I did because this kept me engaged from start to finish and I found the concept fascinating. This is set in present day or at least the near future, but in this world, self-driving cars are the norm. They are considered safer than human driven vehicles. With these cars, there are a lot less accidents. There's definitely no traffic. It is overall the preferred method of travel. But at the beginning of this story, a handful of specifically chosen automatically driven vehicles have been hacked, which isn't supposed to happen. But this hacker has very specific reasons for why he has hacked these cars and what he wants. And you're kind of following that. And eventually at the end of all this, they're basically all supposed to kind of collide. And the hacker actually is broadcasting all of this publicly. So it kind of becomes like a real life reality television show. Everybody's watching the fate of these people in this car. Nobody knows. I just thought it was fantastic. Very well done. Very unique concept. And it's actually kind of terrifying to think about because self-driving cars are kind of becoming a thing. I just loved the concept of this and it was so well executed. So if that sounds interesting to you, highly recommend. I think most of John Mars's books take kind of somewhat sci-fi twist to them. And I guess now that's my thing between that Jillian McAllister book and this, I am highly intrigued to read more from John Mars and more with that sci-fi twist to it. I definitely could not talk about bingeable books without talking about The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This is another one that I sat down and I finished in less than 24 hours because I could not stop. The atmosphere, the story, the suspense, all of it really, really got to me. This follows our main character, Carly, and decades before she was even born, Carly's Aunt Viv went missing from the Sundown Motel where she was working as an overnight clerk in the early 80s. Nobody ever knew what happened to Viv, especially not Carly's mother, who was Viv's sister. Now, unfortunately, Carly's mother has passed away and Carly is determined to find out what happened to Viv because she needs to know for herself and she wants to do that for her mother. So she goes to the Sundown Motel and she actually ends up getting the same position that Viv has basically as the overnight clerk. And it soon becomes apparent that the Sundown Motel is not like most other motels. 
there are ghosts. They are a prominent thing in this story and Simone St. James typically writes a lot of ghost stories and she just does them very very well. Like I said this had me engrossed from start to finish. I could not put it down. I wanted to know what happened. You do actually get Viv's point of view in the 1980s so you're following what actually happened to her in the 1980s and it was just phenomenal. I haven't loved Simone St. James's other books quite as much as this but I still think in general she's a very solid suspense thriller writer with that touch of paranormal. So whereas John Mars has a touch of sci-fi she has a touch of paranormal and if you are into that definitely recommend because you get a little bit more of spookiness to it as well. Still not very gruesome or dark or anything like that but you definitely get those kind of creepy sensations when you read her books and loved this. And the very last one that I want to talk to you about today, one that I actually don't really see talked about all that often, The Collective by Alison Galen. This again was my very first Alison Galen but it will certainly not be my last because this is one that I picked up and I enjoyed way more than I thought that I was going to. So this follows a mother who lost her daughter five years ago to to what the police consider to be a tragic accident. But Camille has never believed her daughter died by accident. She believed that her daughter died at the hands of this very privileged young man. And so she has held a lot of resentment over these past five years. She is still very much deep in her grief. And one day she is actually at an event that is honoring this boy and she loses her cool. She loses her cool immensely and she is put into a video that goes viral. And so things are not going well for her. But this video actually causes her to be contacted by The Collective, which is a group of mothers like herself who have tragically lost their kids in unjust ways. And justice was never served to the people responsible and the collective takes it upon themselves to met out justice to these people. And what I really loved about this is that it goes into detail at how the collective takes out their vengeance. It is so incredibly clever all of the details and planning and organization that goes into the crimes that they commit and it was phenomenal. And the twist at the end of the story how it actually ended I didn't see coming at all and I actually really enjoyed it. So this is another one that from start to finish I was just engaged and I wanted to know what happened. You're gonna feel a lot of empathy for the main character. You're kind of gonna want to root for her and the collective you're going to want to see justice met out but at the same time it's going to make you think about morality black and white vigilante justice and all of that stuff all of that is in here and it was just such a pleasure to read all right y'all finally that is it those are some of my top recommendations for those who are looking to get into the thriller genre as expected i talked for entirely way too long in this video but i hope that you were still able to get some solid recommendations that you think you might be able to go into or even if you are a seasoned thriller reader i hope that you might have been able to find some thrillers that you might have never heard about that have piqued your interest. I obviously really enjoyed all of the stories that I talked to you about here today. I think they all have merit and I think they are all worth the read and hopefully you're able to discover what's going to work for you in thrillers because everybody has their preferences with all of the books they read. Just like you might have some romance tropes that you don't like, you're going to see some thriller tropes that you don't like and you just kind of have to figure that out by exploring a little and I hope that I was able to give you a great place to start. Please of course feel free to let me know down below what some of your favorite thrillers are and what you feel would be excellent thrillers for those just getting into the genre. I would always love more recommendations to suggest to people or you can go ahead and also leave me that scary face guy emoji if you made it to the end of this video and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already I post two videos a week sometimes three if I have my shit together and a third video to film and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos bye guys